Peace, peace, peace. Baraka Thani Hawa. Baraka Thani Hawa Sha. Baraka Thani Hawa. Baraka Thani Hawa Sha. Kahalong. Yahawa. Bahashem. Yahawa Sha. Bahashem. Wakakwadash. Peace and blessings to the kings, the queens, the guys, the guys that choose to view my live. Today, I want to get on my live. I don't want to speak on the wickedness of man and the love of God. And I also want to remind y'all that God laughs at wickedness. You understand what I'm saying? Also, before I go live, I want to give prayers for the lost souls that take life that they do not give. At the same time, I want to send prayers up to those who have lost loved ones due to drastic, I mean, tragic and drastic conditions here on planet Earth. Peace and blessings. That being said, going into another lesson today. Going back into Psalm 36 today. And I'm going into Psalms 37. Probably jumping to uh, Galatians and a few other books later on. But I want to start in Psalm 36, the director of music of David, the servant of the Lord. The wickedness of man and the love of God. Because at the end of the day, the reason that I'm going live is because we see a lot of wickedness going on. A lot of y'all questioning why people are dying at the extensive rates that they're dying. Why your friends, you know what I'm saying, is turning into frenemies, soon to be enemies. You asking questions. You understand what I'm saying? And some of y'all demand the answer to those questions. You just don't understand where you're going to get the answer from. So, I'm on my live. To remind y'all that the Bible already spoke of the wicked deeds of man. You understand what I'm saying? The ways of these wicked individuals. I'm not trying to be funny, but when you think about what you view from your, your the windows to your soul, when you think about what you have experienced from dealing with different individuals, you end up finding out who's a good individual or who's not. You understand what I'm saying? Who's a good candidate to really fuck with and who's somebody you just need to cut the fuck out? Who's somebody that's operating with positive energy versus who's operating out of negative energy? We see what's going on on planet Earth. So at the end of the day, I want to speak about the wickedness of man. You understand what I'm saying? An oracle. And this is 36 and 1. An oracle is within my heart concerning the sinfulness of the wicked. You understand what I'm saying? There is no fear of God before his eyes because the wicked don't worry about fearing God. They think that they are God. You understand what I'm saying? I control my reality. You understand what I'm saying? For in his own eyes, he flatters himself to do much to detect or hate his sin. You don't want to think about, you know what I mean, how, how, how fucked up you are. That's not in your, 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 your perspective at this point in time. You understand what I'm saying? So, so, so God pretty much saying for in his own eyes, he flatters himself too much to detect or hate his sin. You know what I'm saying? You too flattered to, to understand how, how fucked up of an individual you are. Just keeping it hot. The words of his mouth are wicked and deceitful. That's why a lot of y'all, y'all don't mind lying. And, and you think that, you know what I'm saying? If you tell somebody something and you think they don't really know you, they're not going to analyze the type of person that you are, the characteristics or the traits that you come with. You understand what I'm saying? So if you feel like you're lying to somebody and they, they know you by the fruits of your spirit, you can tell them that lie, but you're going to have to continue to tell them another lie to cover up, you know what I'm saying, the truth. And you're going to have to keep telling more lies, but eventually the truth going to come to light. So it says, the words of his mouth are wicked and deceitful. He has ceased to be wise and to do good. <laughs> Cease to be wise and to do good. How many people y'all know out here still living their old lifestyle? They cease to do wise and to do good. To be wise and to do good. Even on his own bed, he plots evil. He commits himself to a sinful course and does not reject what is wrong. And how many of our people don't reject what is wrong? You see somebody speaking about shit you shouldn't be doing. Like, like I was on my Facebook live the other day and I was like, grandmama said, you know what I'm saying? What look good ain't, ain't, ain't good for you. You know what I'm saying? But we don't pay attention to that. So, so, you know what I'm saying? When grandma or mama trying to warn you and tell you that you shouldn't be doing nothing, and you you just ignore them. You ignore them because you think you know better. You feel me? So, so at the end of the day, 
You one of those individuals who you got mama banging on your door, you got grandmama cussing you out, somebody calling the police on you, but you don't care because at the end of the day, you got your mind made up that you're going to do exactly what they said you was going to do in Psalm 36. In verse 4, even on his bed, he plots evil. He commits himself to a sinful course. You understand what I'm saying? And does not reject what is wrong. Verse 5, your love, O Lord, reaches to the heavens and your faithfulness to the skies. Your righteousness is like the mighty mountains and your justice is the great deep. O oh Lord, you preserve both man and beast. How priceless is your unfailing love, both high and low among men. Find refuge in the shadow of your wings. They feast on the abundance of your house. You give them drink from your river of delights. For with you is the fountain of life. In your light we see light. You understand what I'm saying? Continue to your love to those who know you, your righteousness to the upright in heart. May your foot be proud not to come against me. May the foot of the proud not come against me, nor the hand of the wicked drive me away. See how the evildoers lie fallen, thrown down, not able to rise. And then basically Psalms 37. You understand what I'm saying? With the Lord, I was basically telling y'all that the Lord laughed at wickedness. I'm just going to give y'all a little bit of what he laughed at. Do not fret because of evil men or be envious of those who do wrong. God telling you, don't worry about, about no evil man or, or, or be envious of those who do you wrong. For like the grass, they will soon wither. You understand what I'm saying? Like the grass, they're going to soon wither. Like green plants, they will soon die away. Trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and enjoy safe pasture. Delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you desires of your heart. Commit your way to the Lord. Trust in him and he will do this. He will make your righteousness shine like the dawn justice of your cause, like the noonday sun. Be still before the Lord and wait patiently for him. Do not fret when men succeed in their ways. When they carry out their wicked schemes, refrain from anger and turn from wrath. Do not fret. It leads only to evil. Hey, Sam. How you doing? All right. I'll be quick. Yeah, I'll talk to you in a minute. All right, Greg. What's up, Greg? So he's saying. How you doing, Mario? I'm all right. I like that soup. So he's saying, do not fret. It leads only to evil. You understand what I'm saying? Don't, 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 don't be stressed out. Don't, don't be angered. Don't be mad. Don't, you know what I'm saying? Because it's only going to lead to evil. For evil men will be cut off. That's what God's saying. But those who hope in the Lord will inherit the land a, a little while and the wicked will be no more. You understand what I'm saying? For though you look for them, they will not be found. You ain't going to be able to find these wicked people. <laughs> <laughs> they 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 going to be dismissed. God dismissing them. So he said, God said, though you're going to look for them, they will not be found. But the meek will inherit the land and enjoy great peace. The wicked plot against the righteous and gash their teeth at them. But the Lord laughs at the wicked, for he knows their day is coming. You understand what I'm saying? The wicked draw the sword, the gun, and bend the bow. They bring down poor and needy to slay those whose ways are upright. But their swords will pierce their own hearts. Your sword is going to pierce your own heart and their bows will be broken. So, so all that killing, robbing, stealing, all the luxury and the high maintenance products in which you have right now is going to be took away from you. You understand what I'm saying? And your swords, your guns, they're going to pierce your own hearts and your bows, they're going to be broken. You understand what I'm saying? Better the little that the righteous have than the wealth of many wicked. For the power of the wicked will be broken. What I just said? He was going to break that power of y'all wicked people. The planet is for the Gentiles. Nah, the planet is for us. And they wanted it to believe it was for them. But God said, <laughs> God said the power of the wicked will be broken. But the Lord upholds the righteous. You understand what I'm saying? The days of blameless are known to the Lord. And the inheritance will endure forever. In times of disaster, they will not wither. In days of famine, they will enjoy plenty. You understand what I'm saying? We we gonna enjoy plenty in the days of famine. You understand what I'm saying? In times of disaster, we will not wither, huh? We gonna be tried in, 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 in that fire and that furnace, and, and we gonna come out fine like fine gold. You understand what I'm saying? But he said the wicked in verse twenty, Psalm thirty-seven. 
But the wicked will perish. The Lord's enemies will be like <laughs> the beauty of the fields. They will vanish, vanish like smoke. You understand what I'm saying? The wicked borrow and do not repay, but the righteous give generously. Those the Lord bless will inherit the land, but those he curses will be cut off. The Lord delights in man's ways. He makes him his steps firm. Though he stumbles, he will not fall. For the Lord upholds him with his hand. I was young and now I'm old. Yet have never seen the righteous forsaken. Or their children begging bread. There's always generous and lend. They're always generous and lend freely. Their children will be blessed. Turn from evil and do good. Then you will dwell in the land forever. For the Lord loves just, loves the just and will not forsake his faithful ones. They will be protected forever. But the offspring of the wicked will be cut off. It don't matter who your kids is, where they come from. If the offspring of your, you, you, your children, your grandkids, they're going to be cut off. You understand what I'm saying? See you later, Mark. All right, my love you. But the offspring will be cut off. And the righteous will inherit the land and dwell in it forever. The mouth of the righteous man utters wisdom, and his tongue speaks what is just. The law of God is in his heart, his feet not to slip. The wicked lie in wait for the righteous, seeking their very lives. But the Lord will not leave them in their power or let them be condemned when brought to trial. Wait for the Lord and keep his ways. He will exalt you and inherit the land. And the wicked are cut off. You will see. That's in, in, in Psalms 34. You will see it. I have seen a wicked and ruthless man flourishing like a green tree in its native soil. But he soon passed away and was no more. Though I looked for him, he could not be found. So you ain't going to be able to be found, man. You're going to be missing. Consider the blameless. Observe the upright. There is a future for the man of peace. You understand what I'm saying? It's a future for you, man of peace. So, so if you you ain't you ain't trying to be in peace, I don't think you're gonna make it out of the present. But all sinners will be destroyed. For the future of the wicked will be cut off. The future of the wicked will be cut off. The salvation of the righteous comes from the Lord, and He is their stronghold in the time of trouble. The Lord helps them. And delivers them. He delivers them from the wicked and saves them because they take refuge in him. You understand what I'm saying? Now let me see what else I can pull up real quick. Because, I mean, even Job. 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 Okay, yeah. And, and I'm here to say, man, just like in Job 33, uh, God sometimes uses afflictions. And some of us don't think that God afflict us to lead us on a straight path. So let me read this about Job, man. But now, Job, listen to my words. Pay attention to everything I say. I'm about to open my mouth. My words are on the tip of my tongue. My words came from an upright heart. My lips sincerely speak what I know. The spirit of God has made me. The breath of the almighty gives me life. Answer me then if you can. Prepare yourself and comfort. confront me. I am just like you before God. I have being taken from clay, no fear from me should alarm you, nor should my hand be heavy upon you. But I have said in, the, in my hearing, I have heard the very words, I am pure, I am without sin, I am clean, I am free of guilt. Yet God found me, found fault with me. He considers me his enemy. He fastens my feet in shackles. He keeps close watch on all my paths. But I tell you that you are not right, for God is greater than man. Why do you complain to him? Then he answers, none of man's words. For God does speak now one way or another. Though man may not perceive it in a dream, in a vision of the night, when he deep sleep falls on man as the slumber, slumber in their beds, he may speak in their ears and terrify them with warnings. So at the end of the day, it say God sometimes uses afflictions. So let me go back to this real quick one more time. He say that God does speak now one way or now another, though man may not perceive it in a dream, in a vision of the night. When deep sleep falls on men as they slumber in their beds, he may speak 
in their ears, with terrifying, terrifying them with warnings to turn from man, to turn man from wrongdoing and keep him from pride. So at the end of the day, God been speaking to us in a lot of different ways, in a vision, in a dream, in our deep sleep. You understand what I'm saying? He speak to us in our ears and terrify us with warnings. You understand what I'm saying? To turn us from wrongdoing and keep us as men or women from pride to preserve his soul from the pit and his life from the per from perishing by the sword by the gun so so so, so when somebody warning you you understand what i'm saying when somebody warning you it's like it's like god don't woke somebody up one day and he told them you know what i'm saying something that did to wake you up because what he told them was terrifying you understand what i'm saying that's why I said God may speak in your ears and terrify you with warnings to turn from wrongdoing and keep you from pride. Because at the end of the day, if you don't do that, you know what I'm saying? Then he not going to be able to do verse 18 and 33 of Job, which is to preserve your soul from the pit and your life from perishing by the sword. You understand what I'm saying? Or a man may be chastened on a bed of pain with constraint distress on his bones. You understand what I'm saying? So now you're dealing with being sick. You understand what I'm saying? Now you're on bed rest. You understand what I'm saying? So this very being finds food repulsive and his soul loathes the choicest meal. His flesh wastes away to nothing and his bones once hidden now stick out. So he no longer healthy no more. He no longer able to do for himself no more. He stressed the hell out. That's why God say, oh, man be chastened on a bed of pain. With constraint, distress in his bones. So now you might got a bone disease. Now you might be dealing with cancer. But 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 that ain't good enough because God says so that he, his very being finds food repulsive. So you ain't even gonna want nothing to eat. You understand what I'm saying? So 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 now you now you finding food repulsive and your soul loathes for the choicest meal. His flesh wastes away to nothing. And his bones once hidden, cause you know you when you when you healthy when you eating good you ain't showing no bones you you good. You understand what I'm saying? When you healthy, your bones ain't sticking out. But God say his flesh wastes away to nothing, and his bones once hidden now stick out. His soul draws near to the pit. You understand what I'm saying? And his life to the messengers of death. So when you hear somebody like me speaking on, you know what I'm saying, not to do this, not to do that, don't go out here making this decision, watch what you do, treat people with good karma because karma follows you everywhere you go, and if you have bad karma, then you understand what I'm saying? I am nothing more but a messenger of death at the end of the day. I'm coming to, to, to bring some light uh, into the darkness. I'm coming to bring some life into a dead cycle. You understand what I'm saying? Into a death cycle. So God said his soul draws near to the pit and his life to the messengers of death. You understand what I'm saying? So when your soul draws near to the pit and somebody see that you, 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 you about to lose life, they trying to warn you, me personally, or somebody personally who come in your life and they say, look, stop doing what you're doing because I don't, I don't see no way out of it for you. If you don't stop soon, you're going to end up making a decision that's going to cost you your life or make you make a real decision or a real choice that's going to have to be made. You understand what I'm saying? And sometimes it's too late for our brothers because they go out here and they still do what they ain't supposed to do. You understand what I'm saying? So, 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 in, 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 in Job 33, verse 22, it says, your, your soul draws near to the pit and your life to the messengers of death. Yet, if there is an angel on his side as a mediator, one out of the thousand, to tell a man what is right for him. So, you can look at somebody like me as a messenger. Or you can look at somebody like me or, or anybody who come in your life on a physical platform as an angel. Because yet there is an angel on his side as a mediator out of a thousand to tell a man what is right for him. To be gracious to him and say, spare him from going down to the pit. Because some one of us going to be asking God, look, save my cousin soul. Bless my mama heart. Because at the end of the day, we know that you 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 leading yourself down that path of unrighteousness. You understand what I'm saying? To that path of, of not long liberty, but that path of death. Point blank, period. I don't need to get, I don't need to be sitting in front of a preacher, a pastor, a deacon, a prophet, a bishop, none of that. Because I'm going to learn my, I'm going to learn from, from the Holy Spirit. You understand what I'm saying? I'm going to learn from the Holy Spirit. 
And the Holy Spirit going to guide me. You understand what I'm saying? When I listen to man, man always fail me. You understand what I'm saying? When man trying to come to you on a, on a platform of actually caring. You understand what I'm saying? In, in, in the most humblest way. I can trust them. But I can't lean on their understanding. I can trust them. You understand what I'm saying? But anyway. He says, I have found a ransom for him. Then his flesh is renewed like a child. It is restored as in the days of his youth. You understand what I'm saying? So God trying to trying to tell y'all, man. Sometimes God uses afflictions. Because he's trying to raise y'all up from that old man that you used to be, that old woman that you used to be. He's trying to renew you like a child. You understand what I'm saying? So he can restore you like you was in your days of your youth. He prays to God and finds favor with him. Because that's what some of us do. And he sees God's face and shouts for joy. He is restored by God to his righteous state. Then he comes to man and says, I sinned and perverted what was right. But I did not get what I deserved. He redeemed my soul from going down to the pit. And I will live to enjoy the light. You understand what I'm saying? God does all things to a man. Twice, even three times to turn back his soul from the pit. Ain't nobody going to listen to this, man. Because some people like, yo, you know what I'm saying? This nigga, you know what I'm saying? We know him personally, man. Why he on Facebook speaking like this, blah, 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 whatever. But but here I am trying to tell you that, you know what I'm saying? God putting y'all through afflictions. And it says right here in, in, in chapter 33. You understand what I'm saying? Verse 28. He redeemed my soul from going down to the pit and I will live to enjoy the light. You understand what I'm saying? God does all things to a man twice and even three times to turn back his souls from the pit that the light of life may shine on him. Pay attention, Job, and listen to me. Be silent and I will speak. Some of us don't know how to be quiet. We just in the noise. And the only thing we're trying to do is make the noise be quiet so we can think. Sometimes you ain't going to be able to think within that noise. So God said, pay attention and listen to me. Be silent and I will speak. If you have anything to say, answer me. Speak up for I want you to be clear. But if not, then listen to me. Be silent and I will teach you wisdom from the earthly mother. It is unthinkable that God will do wrong. But I'm here to tell you that God, like he said in 33, 29 through 30, God does all things to a man twice and even three times to turn back his souls from the pit. Huh? That the light of life may shine on him. But like I said, 34, chapter 34, verse 1. So verse two, hear my words, you wise men, listen to me, you young men of learning for the ear tests words. Some of our ears, they test words. Mama, don't do that. Daddy, you better stop. But we now nah, we, we still go do what we doing just to see how much our ear can test those words. We still do what we do until we end up. <laughs> Mama don't pop the shit out of us. Daddy don't hop, popped out that damn belt. So, 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 here go God trying to tell you. Some of us be thinking it is unthinkable that God will do wrong. But here you go. He say, hear my words, you wise men, and listen to me, you men of learning. For the ear tests words as the tongue tastes food. You understand what I'm saying? Your ear going to test these words just like your tongue, taste, your tongue tastes food. You understand what I'm saying? Let us discern ourselves what is right. Let us learn together what is good. Job says, I am innocent, but God denies me justice. Although I am right, I am considered a liar. Although I am guiltless, his arrow inflicts an incurable wound. Woo! So we be thinking we perfect. We, we think, you know what I mean? We good. But God ain't looking at us like we good, so we going through afflictions. And we thinking this is unthinkable that God will do wrong. Huh? Okay, well, let's listen to what God's saying. You know what I'm saying? 
What man is like Job, who drinks scorn like water? He keeps company with evildoers. He associates with wicked men. For he says, it profits a man nothing when he tries to please God. So listen to me, you young men of understanding. Far be it from God to do evil, from the Almighty to do wrong. He repays a man for what he has done, and God will repay you for what you have done. You better think about this. He brings upon him what is his conduct deserves. It is unthinkable that God would do wrong, that the Almighty would pervert justice. Who appointed him over the earth? Who put him in charge of the whole world? If it were in his intention and he withdrew his spirit and breath, all mankind would perish together and man would not would return to the dust. If you have understanding, hear this, listen to what I say. He who hates justice, govern. Will you condemn the just and mighty one? Is he not one who says to kings, you are worthless, and to nobles, you are wicked, who shows no partiality to prince, to princes, and does no favor, and does not favor the rich over the poor? For they are all work of his hands. They die in an instant, in the middle of the night, People are shaken and they pass away. The mighty are removed without human hand. You understand what I'm saying? Hey, some of y'all like, damn, I wish I could beat this nigga ass. Some of y'all like, damn, I wish I could do something to take this nigga out. Some of y'all like, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, I, I, I want to get him. But some of y'all don't understand karma is going to get who you can't get. God going to get who you can't get. And he even telling you that I'm going to get who you can't get because he says for all of us are the work of his hands. He say, men and women die in an instant. In the middle of the night, people are shaking and they pass away. And the mighty are removed without human hand. His eyes are on the ways of men. He sees their every step. There is no dark place, deep, no deep, no shadow, no deep shadow where evil doers can hide. So it don't matter what you're doing. God has no need to examine man further, that they should come before him for judgment. Because he already know who you are and how you are. He already know how he gonna judge you. But I ain't even gonna get into um all of this. I'm just I'm just jumping around right now. You know what I'm saying? I'm just jumping around right now. Because at the end of the day, like I said, I'm only on my I'm only on my live for the truth. But, 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 uh, thank y'all for tuning in to this live. Anybody who did tune in, have been tuning in. Cause I, I really just feel like I just needed to get on here. You know what I'm saying? And put some, put some stuff out. God will judge Judah. Okay. We already passed all of that stuff. Looking at some false prophets. Oh yeah. We could go into that, but yo, check this out. Like I said, peace and blessings to all of y'all. Appreciate y'all tuning in. Try to go live as much as I can to put stuff out. But the wickedness of, the wickedness of man, it ain't going to be something that we're going to have to continue to endure for too much longer, man. Like I said, the earth is given into the hands of the wicked. And God said the internet Esau, eat them. Jacob be the beginning that follow. So... With that being said, the 12 tribes of Israel sent to preach, man, and Mark, uh, let me make sure I get this right, I want to make sure, Mark 6, man, Mark 6, I'm going to just read this out, man, the 12 are sent to preach, then Jesus went around teaching from the village, from village to village, calling the 12 to him, he sent them out two by two, then gave them authority over evil spirits, you understand what I'm saying? So when, when when people talk about the 12 tribes of Israel, the 12 tribes of Judah, man, the seed of Abraham, you understand what I'm saying? Then you know he's talking about uh, God people, God chosen. You understand what I'm saying? These were his instructions. Take nothing for the journey except a staff. No bread, no bag, no money in your belts. Wear sandals, but not an extra tunic. Whenever you enter a house, Stay there until you leave that town. And if any place will not, 
welcome you or listen to you shake the dust off your feet when you leave as a testimony against them. You understand what I'm saying? They went out and preached but that the people should repent. They drove out many demons and anointed many sick people with oil and healed them. Now, I want to say something real quick. He said that they went out and preached that the people should repent. That, that the people should repent. I remember going in my Bible, and I ain't even going to get the verse, but I'm going to read this out. I'm going to say this out. Cry loud, spare not, lift up thy voice like a trumpet, and tell thy people their transgressions. So when, when God was telling them in Mark 6 and 12, when God was talking about they went out and preached that the people should repent, When we go out, or when anybody who, who pretty much understand this word go out, we, we, we doing exactly what the Bible tell us to do. We telling our people to repent, but before we tell them to repent, we got to lift up our voice like a trumpet. We got to cry loud. We got to spare not. You understand what I'm saying? We're not sparing nobody feelings. We're not holding back no truths. You understand what I'm saying? It's going to hurt a lot of people's feelings that they feel like for John 3.16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, but they ain't even read the whole part of what's going on. They don't even know who God talking to. And even in that book, God was talking that he was talking about. He was talking to Israel. You understand what I'm saying? And who is Israel? Jacob Israel. You understand what I'm saying? He saw Edom as a whole nother, you know what I'm saying? But let me see if I can find that real quick too. If I can't find it in this book. Matthew, Luke, John. There we go. John 3 and 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but will have eternal life. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. Whoever believes in him should not be condemned. Whoever does not believe stands condemned already because he has not believed in the name of God. God's one and only son. This is a verdict. Light has come down into the world, but men love darkness instead of light because of their deeds were evil. Everyone who does evil hates the light and will not come into the light for the fear that his deeds will be exposed. But, wait a minute, let me sure. But whoever lives by the truth comes into light so that it may be seen plainly that he has done, that what he has done has been done through God. Now, let me go down to three. Wait a minute. Make sure I put this in the right perspective. Basically, anyway, he was talking to Israel. And I got to pull this up in my King James Version. So when I get back on my live, I'm going to be doing that. Uh, I'm going to be doing a video on, on, on John 3.16, and I'm going to break down the whole thing with precepts, so therefore, I ain't even going to have to worry about going into um, what I'm looking for, because right now, I just got on my live, and I was talking about the wickedness of man, but we'll jump back into John 3.16 when I get back on here another time, but peace and blessings to the kings, the queens, the guys, the guys that choose to view this live. I hope that this was something, excuse me, helpful for y'all to be able to look at too. Excuse me for yourself, but the wickedness of man is something that's going to end up coming to an end eventually. And I'm telling you that I'm so grateful and so thankful. You know what I'm saying? Every day, you know what I'm saying? The Bible saying, do it to the end, and do it to the end, and do it to the end. And that's what I see myself. You know what I'm saying? Every time I find myself. 
you know what I mean, overcoming an obstacle or hurdle. The only thing I can hear is God's voice saying endure to the end. You understand what I'm saying? But being told that one thing might go this way and another thing might go that way from man, I still tell myself no matter the outcome or the circumstances, endure to the end. Peace and blessings to the kings, the queens, the gods, the gods that choose to view this live. Peace and love. Once again, like I said, I'm out.